Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vasso and welcome back to 10,000 and Below, where I take a look at games that are ranked very low on Board Game Geek, and we see if we either find some good ones, bad ones, interesting ones, just kind of a pass through. We're actually going from 12,001 downward starting in this episode, um, and I will also say that I record these some time apart when I do, I do these sometimes in clumps, but either way, there's going to be games that you may have seen before because the rankings are constantly shifting. But, you know, we'll still see new stuff, so let's get started here. Twelve thousand and one is called Mouse Match. So Mouse Match is an interesting sounding game. Well, it looks like it's for kids. Actually, it's ranked one ninety nine on the kids scale. Like I said before, Board Game Geek tends to rank kids games low. Ooh, this is from Dry Magier. I really like how this one looks. It looks fun. Ooh, that looks cool too. What company is that from? Well, either way, that looks like a pretty fun kids game. Interesting. All right, let's continue back. Crosshairs testing ground. We've already seen this one before. It's dropped lower since last time. Treasure Fleet, which is from Ship of Fools. I think we've already taken a look at this one, too. This is one I think that actually will probably, I think I said this before, will go lower just because the how the game looks is just not that impressive at all, unfortunately, as time goes by. Ooh, new Mastermind, 2004. I've actually been playing quite a bit of Mastermind lately. Uh, this one here, you just pull out things on the different sides. Now for up to five players? Okay, I feel like I've talked about this already, because, yeah, again, I, I know I talked about this one in the past. Mastermind is a one-player game. Alrighty, moving on down. Stuff Your Face. I've already talked about that one in the past. Man, a lot. there's been a lot of changes here. So let's take a look at this game, Wacky 6. All right, so Wacky 6 is to be the first person to go out and call Wacky 6. Play all 12 cards dealt to you, so you want to clear out your cards as much as you can. Let's take a look at the cards. Oh, I don't hate those. I don't hate how those look. Wacky! <laughs> Alrighty, that sounds like a fun, clear hand style game. Oh, there's a game at. Yes, wow. It is interesting to see how many games as I go through here have been higher on the list and have dropped down. Alright, so here we have Tenka. Tenka, you're a baron in Japan. I remember going through this game. Ah, oh, it's too bad. I don't dislike that cover. From Victory Point games. Yeah, Victory Point games are okay in how they look, unfortunately. Hide, Hidden Identity, Dice Espionage. Talked about that one, too, before. I really want to like that one from May Day Games. All the King's Men. Man, there's been a lot of shiftings in the rankings since the last time I recorded this because this is yet another one that's dropped down pretty fast. We Come in Peace, Sherlock Express, Zombie Terror. Well, that sounds like a boring game. Let's take a look at it. No, I looked at this one before, too. What is this all about? I remember talking about the cover for this one. Alrighty, well, let's just keep moving. This is going to be a faster video than most of these are. Captain Clever. Captain Clever from Rio Grande or Gigamic. You are placing boats, and you're going to get information from your right-hand neighbor. This is a... Uh, what is this game? It is a kid's game. I don't remember. When when did I play this one? 2011, so nine years ago. Nice pieces, but it, for a real Grande slash Zoc game that has pieces this nice, and I did not give it, I gave it a five. That's not a very high rating for a game that old, unfortunately. Inverse. Is this like inverse? But without the E, I guess so. Turn things upside down. A two-player abstract game where you slide tiles out of a 6x6 grid and flip them over. Hmm. Looks, usually I'm a little bit 
interested in these, you know, abstract strategy games, but that one looks incredibly boring. Pass Ackwards. I reviewed this game. Of course, the title there is definitely a hey, ha, 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 punny thing here. So this is password, and you're giving clues that you don't want your people to decipher in the right ways. You're using crummy clues, so you don't want the guesser to guess the secret word. Um, that's right. So it is like password. I, I remember playing this. I remember thinking, meh. R&R um, &R games for a while made several games with these uh, red screen here where you can see the secret words. Time's Up Green Edition, Holly Golly Extreme. I think we've seen this one before too. Holly Golly is just not my style game. In Korea, everybody played Holly Golly. They really liked it. I see there's different number of fruits on the cards. Like, is that why it's extreme? Or that there's animals involved in it? Or that when you hit someone's hand on the bell, there's a spike there? That would make it extreme. Cinco. I'm assuming you have to get five in a row in this one. Yep. Okay. 90 fields. So you place cards like five straight. There's You start with four cards. You place them in peace. The number must be the same or higher than the number played. Well, that's interesting. So I guess I'm assuming the lower numbers are in the middle. Okay. That's interesting. So you can play a card. So if I play 50, I can play on 50 through 100. Obviously, I want to play on 50, but I'm also trying to look where I can get five in a row. But if I don't play on 50, huh, it sounds fairly light, but I would play it. Cash, first name, Johnny. All righty, that cover is not doing that game any wonders. One guy is an art guy carrying a loaf of French bread. The other guy is looking at, and they're just all carrying money everywhere. I guess the game is called Cash. Wolfgang Kramer's one of this, and he did it with designer... Is Jurgen Gruno? I don't know that person's name. Gula, Gulo, Gulo, and Monza. Okay. So this came out in '90. You draw key cards or play one or more combinations of key cards. Open a safe. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. The artwork. So you're just a bunch of thieves. All right. Let's see here. Schlock Mercenary Capital Offensive. This is actually a very good game. It's unfortunate this one has not gotten a lot of buzz. So Schlock Mercenary is based on the very popular webcomic. And it uses this really interesting attack where, depending on how far they are, you roll dice. The components for the game, unfortunately, weren't fantastic. But I really liked the combat system. You were looking for different roles. And in fact, the combat system was popular enough that the Sentinels in the Multiverse board game used the same one. And wow, I think we've uh, seen all the punch boards there. Let's see if we can see a picture of the game in progress. <laughs> they definitely have uh, punch board pictures. Yeah, there's not a lot of games in progress here. Here's one. You move around the board. So, yeah, it has the look of an old Steve Jackson game, frankly, but it actually is pretty fun. Million Club. I'm assuming you have to have a million dollars to be part of this club. The Industrial Revolution. You are a close circle of barons of finance. All right, this is from Asmodee and Play It Games. This is from 2016. But what is it? Is it a... Resource management? Is that little paper money? That does. Maybe it's card money. The cards look interesting. I like the look of the game. It has a kind of a cool steampunk vibe to it. Hmm? All right. Million Club. I don't know much more about that. Gobblestones. Gobblestones is from Stephen Glenn. This came out in 2015. Artist Tina. Bangorno, let's see uh, the art that she's done. She's done Biotechs, Betabots, and Gobblestones. Her artwork is fantastic, but as you might have noticed, she did the artwork for the Dice Tower logos and such. I like her stuff a lot. I never knew she did this game. Woo! That board doesn't look good. That's graphic design, though. I do like the art. So you're just placing stuff on the board. Huh. This looks like a game that I would play, though. Tile lane game. You uh, set up these boards, you one by one, you play them, then you draw and you play. 
So it's like Scrabble. You're trying to cover up colors and score the numbers that you cover. You can't place tiles so that a two by two area of the game board's covered. Huh. This one has gotten 100 ratings, not a ton. Agora Barcelona. The market of Barcelona. Uh, this one is, wow, when did I review this one? It says 2015. I'm trying. Oh, I remember this one. This is the first time I saw Meeples, and I didn't review it in 2015. It must have been earlier than that. The Meeples were two different types. There were male, uh, females, and female Meeples, or uh, maybe not male and female, but just pants and, and dress-wearing Meeples in Barcelona, and you were trying to go to different neighborhoods by playing the cards. I really like the look of this one. I don't know that this company ever went anywhere. Bram Bander. They made two games. No, only one. Huh. I thought for sure they had made two. Well, that's the only game they ever made. And the designer, Jep Ferret, did gaudy, and that's it. Maybe the other design. There's two designers. Let's take a look at the other one. Yeah, well, the other one designed more things. Huh. Well, either way, I remember playing that. It's been a long time. I enjoyed that one. I'm going to have to go back and give that one a whirl at some point. Maybe. I keep saying that about a lot of old games. Drinking Quest Journey into Draught, Hull Breach, Gods, and Go Town. All right, Gods with a Z from Red Glove Game. You are going to be different pantheons fighting each other here. Tud, God of the Mountains, Mud and Ugly Snouts, or Glue, God of the Sea, a Fried Fish, and Octo Guys. So Red M tends to make games with funny art sometimes. Yeah, you can see the cover there looks cool. I don't know if the game itself is good. Looks like a fun rampaging style game. Go Town, real estate building. This is a small little game from Helvetique. I feel like I have this game on my shelf, but most of these small games I played from this company, I haven't enjoyed, so I don't know if I would like this one or not. All right, jumping down here, we have Nanobot. Battle Arena, and I found it Journey Through Time. Ooh, I like it. All right, so Nanobot Battle Arena. Huh. This is a game. Did I do the preview for this one? I did do the, the preview for this one. And I thought it was an interesting game. I remember, I remember this game because they sent me the miniatures, and it was like, don't break these miniatures. They're the only ones we have. And that scared me as a, a previewer. I don't know that I ever... I guess I did play the final version of it. Moving the robots around and all. But I really didn't enjoy it. I thought it would be more fun than it was. Moving these around and attacking things. Huh. Yeah, this is a Kickstarter that. Unfortunately, I remember now seeing it. I remember doing the preview for this one. But wow, I don't... This game did not make a mark at all. This one I remember a lot, though. I do because I still have it. I found it. This is good. If you like Where's Waldo, that's what this game is. It's essentially you are finding stuff on this really giant board. And unfortunately, they don't have a picture of the board here, I don't think. Now, there's a picture of the box up, but it's this really long board. In fact, I liked it so much with my kids. Like, we're like, how many pirates, you know, five, five pirates, and there's pirates all over the place. And there's a Disney version of stuff. It's just a huge picture, and you're finding different things all over it. And... It, and they'll ask you to find various things, and it's just a lot of fun, especially with kids and families. That's why I got an eight for me. Trivia Pursuit, World of Warcraft. Who's playing that? All right, this one here has 208 ratings. Di Oystrensel. This is about Easter Island. It's a design by Leo Calavini and Alex Randolph. That is about the very opposite of a design team I'd want to play with. I, I like, I've I like enjoyed games from both designers, but they're both super abstract. I do like that these guys are wearing those clever little hats. That's a, That was a good picture I just saw there. The pieces look fun, but it's just a racing abstract strategy game. It's got a decent amount of ratings, but I don't think this ever saw an English release. <laughs> Why I otter? <laughs> This one, I just like the name of it. Jump into the river. Why I otter. Oh, it's from Button, Button Shy. I, I got to get that one just because of the name. Zero. So, zero here. 
from university games, you want to be a complete zero. Ask players, search your mind for the least popular aspects of pop culture. And you have to match and come up with the least likely answer. The person who scores closest to zero. So I guess I'm assuming you're gonna, you want to get an answer that someone actually said, but the smallest one. Because if they say, what's your favorite color? I'm not going to say, you know, George Washington. I'm trying to pick maybe brown and hoping that the fewest people pick that one. Sounds like an interesting concept. Huh, I think I might run with that. Austerlitz, Austerlitz, 1805, Napoleon's Greatest Victory. This is quite a few ratings here from GMT Games, David Fox. Uh, came out. I wonder why those, those arrows are on the board. Oh, no, no, no. That's just that's explaining how to play the game. I guess those arrows aren't actually on the board. I have to say, for some reason, GMT's games, when it comes to these, their counters always look better than everyone else's. Instead of having those little blobs that we consider tanks and stuff, these seem to have a better look about them. The boards still could use some work, but I guess people fought them boring, boring boards or boring planes. Pocket Sub. Well, that one's got some love here. Alley Cat Games. I don't think I played this one. I saw it come through the dice tower, though. Maybe someone else here reviewed it. Yep, Sam Haley did. All right. Back and forth game like that. Strawberry Ninja. And, well, I'll put both of these on there because I think they're the same company, actually. Yeah, they're both from Strawberry Studio. The little monster that came for tea. And then the next one, Strawberry Ninja. Also from... That's weird that they're right next to each other like that. In this one, you're moving Strawberry Ninja around, trying to find things. You have the cat going around trying to catch a Strawberry Ninja. It is a fun little game. Um, Strawberry Studios, uh, which was a uh, like the kids' version of, of NSKN, or the family game version, they make some delightful little games, and Strawberry Ninja is one of those. Darter. Wow. Only 36 people. Oh, I see, because it was re-implemented by the Dragons of Kerr. Let's see where that one ended up at. Oh, that one ranked at 7,000. That one went way up and has 147 ratings. Well, they're the exact same game. So Darter was the first one that came out. They just added a theme to it. And what Darter was is this game that came in a tube, and you have these pieces. These, It's like they just keep moving and moving around the board, and you're trying to put stuff in front of them to block them and bounce them and, and go get the other person. I like the idea of it. There's a fun concept. It's like a pinball game, but you're putting this stuff in play to bounce it at the other person. Elfin Gold. This is the expansion here, I believe. No, it's not the expansion of the same name. This is just its own game. Then I haven't played this one. So he made an Elfin Gold expansion, but this just looks like. Why would he have done that? Huh. Well, this is one of Alan Moon's least known games, I suppose. It has a decent amount of ratings. But it came out in 1991, almost 30 years ago. Artist Doris Mathau. It's a bluffing game. Huh, okay. Back when Alan Moon was as young as me. The Card Game of Oz, On to Moscow, um, Emperor of China. That one has 100 review comments. Dynamic Games. It's an abstract strategy war game. You're trying to conquer China. Okay, it's an interesting looking board. Man, I've seen those pieces in another game. I guess they stack or they're easy to pick up. They don't look that good, but man, I've seen those somewhere. Meh, okay. Let's continue on down here. The 45 top speed and plexed. So Top Speed, this game came out in 2003. I reviewed it in 2009, and Plex, I reviewed it in 2009. So you're racing these cards based on what? Oh, that's right, Reinhard Stop. Based on the different items that are there. Okay. What did I give this one? I gave it a 5. I must not have enjoyed it very much. It looks very abstract. Plexed. This one I gave a 6 to. This is an okay... Um, Basically, you roll dice and find find words that are there. Oh, board game geeks, how clever. Of course. 
the cover there shows IV and G-M-A-R-L-B-K-S-T-V-W-L, and you're writing words that using those dice. Okay. That's kind of cool. But that box, whew, that looks like something from the 70s, doesn't it? My Fair Princess. This I reviewed five years ago. This is from Japan Brand. Ah, okay. You had these princesses that you were leveling up, and, and it was kind of a worker placement, and your princess was trying to get better and do things. It really felt like an app almost that came to life. Like, oh, I want the best princess. Um, it, it's, it's okay, I guess. I gave it a five, so maybe I wasn't that impressed with it. The theme doesn't do anything for me. Um, but worker placement's fun, but I guess that one wasn't good enough. I don't remember. Nomads of Arabia, the Wandering Herds game. Is this from Watsaplag? This is from Watsaplag. Didn't I review this one? I did not review this one. But in this one, you're capturing goats and taking them back. I really feel like I played this one and didn't like it. But it's been a really long time, so maybe I did not. Watsaplag has put out some interesting games. I just don't remember this one very much at all. Zombie Bus. We got to look at that one just because of the name. Sweet Games. I like that cover. This looks like a friendlier zombie game. It must be for kids. I like the artwork. Head to Head Poker as opposed to the... Oh, it's just two-player. A two-player game. You roll a die, you get chips, you play cards, you bet against one other person. I guess. Was there people asking for this? Obviously not since it's ranked 12,084. Honeycomb, Scotland Yard, the card game. I saw that one before. Mini Mastermind. Well, we already saw the new Mastermind. Mini Mastermind is just a travel version of it, I suppose. Whew, you got to get it in six tries. Hmm. I think I could do it in six tries. I, at home, I've been playing um, one where there's six, and you got to get all six of them. That's a little trickier, but I haven't. I've done it now. I don't think I've messed it up once in the past 15 games. of them. I'm getting better at it. Uh, Mastermind is one of those games that as it goes by, you're just getting better at it. Lugu, On the Rocks. On the Rocks is coming out, right? Yes. I backed this one on Kickstarter. That's how I remember it. Uh, if I remember correctly, this one did not succeed the first time. But I like the idea here of putting the marbles into different drinks. It's a very... Very nice looking game. I really like the artwork and the graphic designs. That looks fantastic. I'm hoping it's a good game. I doubt it will stay here at 12094. Let's see, we got Escape the Nightmare. Crom Forbidden. And then Pumpkin Patch Bad Seeds. Those are the last four we'll look at on this one here. Escape the Nightmare. A uh, cooperative real-time trading game with optional singing. That is the nightmare. You're in a share nightmare. You have to trade in with people. Why was there optional singing? Mm, I don't think I like this idea. Crom. Is this based on a cartoon? The village chief has disappeared. Yeah, it does. Is that Krom? Or is that Krom? Or is that Krom? Or is she Krom? Yeah, the artwork's okay. Forbidden. I gave this one a four. Mahjong meets Jin Rummy. Yeah, okay. Phil Urbanes designed this one. Winning moves. And this came out in 2004. Doesn't look very good. Why would I have even... Well, maybe I just thought it was fine. Oh, I remember these artwork. Yeah, no. And finally, the last one, Pumpkin Patch Bad Seeds from Travis Drake and Tim Eller and Brouhaha Games. You're going to compete to harvest seeds from burgeoning pumpkin patch filled with ugly, scary, and horrifically creepy pumpkins for one to three players. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting sold on this one here. I like the cards. I like the artwork. Not the graphic design could be better, but I do like the artwork. Those are look at that great white pumpkin. That's cool. 
Huh. That's really interesting. So this is designed by Travis Drake and Tim Eller. What else have they designed? That's the only game from Travis Drake. Only game from Tim Eller. And is this the only game from Bruhaha? It is, but it is 2019, so who knows? Well, it's certainly one that I might look at. Well, there you go, folks. Those are the games we've seen today as we continue our zooming through the bottom 10,000 and below games on Board Game Geek. If you have anything you want to say about any of these, mention in the comments. Maybe it was one I missed and I should have talked about. Tell people about it. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you all later.